All right, so we're now moving on to the second part of this unit, and that's just going to be solving uh, basic inequalities. And you're going to see this is very similar to what we did with equations. So this video should hopefully be pretty quick, and it should hopefully be something that you're all able to just easily understand and grasp. Um, the hardest part of this is probably going to be for some of you is after you solve for it to be able to graph your answer at the end. So you'll see though, it's very similar to what we've just been doing with solving equations, except for now they're just inequalities, right? There is a rule that we're going to learn, but it won't be in this video and it'll be in our next video, but there is a very specific rule that we have to apply when we are solving inequalities in a very specific case. Um, but that won't be in this one. This one is just going to be solving some basic one-step inequalities. So you'll have to know how to solve one-step inequalities and also graph your solutions. Um, but we've already learned how to graph in the other video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so before we actually move into solving anything, let's just talk about the relationships and what happens when we're doing, uh, when we add, subtract, multiply, or, or divide to both sides of our inequality, and if anything changes. All right, so if we're given these four statements, so the first one, let's just focus on the first one. If it says five is greater than two, and we all agree with that, five is greater than two. So if I go ahead and let's just say I add the same number to both sides, and I'm just picking three, the statement still remains true. Five plus three is eight, two plus three is five, and eight is still greater than five. So as long as if we are adding the same number to both sides of our inequality, Nothing changes with our statement. It still remains true. The side that was once larger is going to remain larger and it should make sense because we're increasing both sides by the same amount. So if both sides are being increased by the same amount, then the side that originally was larger should remain larger. So hopefully that does uh, jump out and make sense to you. When we go ahead and do uh, this letter B, we see, okay, negative 12 is less than negative eight. Now remember, when we're dealing with negative numbers, the larger number is actually less than because it's further away from zero. Um, then the smaller number, if you want to think about it as smaller and larger without the signs. So in this case, negative 12 is less than negative 8. So now if I subtract the same amount from both sides, so I'm just going to subtract 5. My uh, Negative 12 minus 5 is negative 17. And negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. Well, negative 17 is still less than negative 13. So nothing changes with that inequality. So you see, as long as if we are adding the same thing to both sides or subtracting the same thing from both sides, we know that the inequality relationship remains true, meaning the side that was once that started out as greater is still greater after we perform uh, the addition or subtraction to both sides. So it, it just wanted to make sure that we're understanding that the relationship will not change when we are adding or subtracting. All right, so let's go ahead and look to see, well, what happens if we multiply or we divide? So in this case, I'm going to say, let's do division. So in both of these, I'm going to divide by five. Right, so when we started out, negative 25 is greater than uh, negative 50. Um, it is closer to zero, uh, so it is greater than negative 50. When we divide each side by the same number, 5, we get negative 5 and we get negative 10. Well, negative 5 is still greater than or equal to negative 10, so you see the relationship still doesn't change. So as long as if we're dividing by the same number on both sides, uh, you'll see that the relationship does not change. Uh, positive in this case, so we're dividing by a positive number here. Um, and then from here, let's go ahead and multiply. And let's just multiply both of these by two. So 38 is less than 100. And if I multiply both of these by two, I get 76 and I get 200. And 76 is still less than 200. So you see the relationship did not change either. So the one key thing that I need to point out here for the multiplication division, because it's something we're actually going to learn next, is when we're multiplying or dividing both sides by a positive number, our relationship didn't change. So we saw that the side that was started out as greater still was greater after we divided both sides by the same positive number. The side that started out as less than was still less than after we multiplied both sides by the same positive number, right? So that's one of the things that we need to make sure that we're understanding uh, because there is a rule we're going to learn in our next video. Well, what happens when we divide or multiply by a negative number, All right? So what I just want to point it out is this is very similar to what we're doing with equations as far as um, using our inverse operations and keeping each side balanced where we do the same thing to both sides. We're adding three to both sides. We're subtracting five from both sides. We're multiplying both sides by two or dividing both sides by five. So as long as if we're doing the same thing on both sides, you see the relationship did not change. All right, the relationship, what was uh, started out as greater than was still greater than after we add it. What was started out as less than was still less than after we subtract it by the same. And then what started out as greater than was still greater than after we um, divide it by the same positive number. And what we started out as less than remain less than after we multiply by the same positive number. 
All right, so I just wanted to point out here that when we're doing the same to both sides, the relationship does not change. All right, so let's go ahead and solve some answers. All right, so the questions that we're going to go through now are just solving some basic inequalities. So there's one step inequalities just so that we can practice solving and then graphing as well. So when you get these graphs, I'm not going to put the number line on them. You're going to have to create your own number line. All right, so um, let's go ahead and, and talk about what we would do for this. So nothing changes as far as our inverse operations. When we see x plus 15 is less than 17, what we need to do is we still need to do our inverse operations. So we ask ourselves, well, what is being done to our variable? Well, we're adding. Well, what's the inverse of addition? Is we subtract. And as we talked about just a few moments ago, as long as if we're subtracting the same thing from both sides, our relationship doesn't change. So now these cancel out and we get x is less than two. So we cannot graph until we solve. So you must first solve and isolate your variable x and get what your actual answer is equal to. So this means that what this is saying is every single number that is less than two, we can plug into this and will satisfy. So if we plug in negative 200, it will work. If we plug in five, or I'm sorry, if we plug in negative five, it will work. If we plug in zero, it works. However, if we try to plug in two, two plus 15, is this less than 17? Well, 17 is not less than 17. So no, it doesn't work because it's not equal to, right? So remember, we don't include it if it's not equal to as well. So this is saying every single number that we know that is less than two will work, right? Now, after you, satisfy, after you, you um, isolate your variable, then we need to graph. So we look and see, okay, the number that we are uh, less than or greater than uh, is that two. So I'm going to them, the way I would suggest you do this is you have to at least make five uh, numbers on your number line. So I would make a number line, put five tick marks and whatever number you get to that you isolate it to, put that right in the middle too. And then let's go ahead and add one to the go to the right because you know we increase as we go to the right and then add another one. So two plus one gives me three, three plus one gives me four. And then when I go to the left, subtract it. 2 minus 1 gives me 1, and 1 minus 1 gives me 0. And that will create my number line. All right, then we ask ourselves, is this a closed or an open circle? And since it's not equal to, we know it's going to be open. So I'm going to put an open circle at that number 2. And remember, it then creates our, our graph, or our region, or it separates our graph into two separate regions. And then what I would suggest you do for this until you get really comfortable with being able to just understand and know how to graph these is pick a number from both sides and both regions and test it into your original problem. So then we'll test it and say, okay, one plus 15, is this less than 17? Well, one plus 15 is 16. That is less than 17. So since that works, I know that this is a solution. So all of the numbers in this region are going to be a solution. So I know that my graph is then going to go in this direction. And you would have been able to identify that as well, because we're saying that X plus 15 is less than 17 or our answer is X is less than two. And we know that the numbers on the number line decrease as we move to the left. So we know that our graph would have to go to the left as well. But we can then go ahead and test the other region three and make sure that that doesn't work. Well, does three plus 15, is this less than 17? And no, 18 is not less than 17. So we know that this is not a solution. So no other number in this region is a solution as well. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. All right, so for this problem, it says solve the given inequality and then graph again. All right, so now we have x over 4 is greater than or equal to negative 15. So once again, we need to isolate our variable first before we can do anything. So x over 4, well, what does this fraction bar mean? It means division again. So now we need to multiply each side by 4. And this is going to cancel out just to give us our 1x. So x is greater than or equal to. And negative 15 times 4 is negative 60. All right, so once again, once we do this, the number that we then isolate it to, I'm just going to go ahead and write it directly in the middle. So I'll have negative 60. And then to create the rest of my number line, I'm just going to add one. Well, negative 60 plus one is negative 59. And then plus one again is negative 58. As we subtract one, it's negative 61 and negative 62. So just remember, as we are on a number line or when we're in negative numbers, as we, the smaller number, meaning 59, if we think of it as the absolute value, 59 is less than 60. So the smaller number that we're used to seeing is actually greater than, all right? A lot of times students will reverse this number line and they'll have it as negative 58, negative 59, negative 60, and so on, because they're used to writing it in that way in a positive. But remember, in negative, it actually gets reversed. So then we need to ask ourselves at negative 60, is this a closed or an open circle? And since it's equal to, it is a closed circle. So at negative 60, I will go ahead and put a closed circle. And now I need to figure out, well, which side does my graph go to, to the right or to the left? So we can create and separate that region. Um, I'm now going to go ahead and pick two numbers. 
uh, to plug in. And when I pick these numbers, I'm going to be a little strategic because we're dividing by four. So I'm going to go ahead and do, even though it's not on my number line, negative 56. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, select. Um, so let's do negative 56 real quick. So negative 56 over four. Is this greater than or equal to negative 15? Uh, well, negative 56 divided by four is negative 14. And negative 14 is greater than or equal to negative 15. So we know that that works. So that means that my graph is going to go in that direction. So I know that this would be my graph. Uh, and let's go ahead and pick another number. I'm going to do negative 64 and negative 64 over 4. Is this greater than or equal to negative 15? Well, negative 64 uh, divided by 4 is going to give me uh, negative 16 and negative 16 is not greater than or equal to negative 15. So no, we know that that region does not work. And the reason why I picked 56 and 64 is because I was picking numbers that I knew would be divisible by 4. And since 60, I know is divisible by four, the next number that would be divisible will be four units away in both directions. You could have used any of them if you wanted to, 58, 59. Uh, however, you're going to get a decimal. Uh, so if you're not able to use a calculator, it's just a little bit easier to pick numbers that we know will give us a whole number in return. But if you are able to use a calculator for this part, obviously any of these numbers will be easy for you to use because you can just go ahead and plug them in. All right. That is all that we're going to do for this video because we've already learned how to do all the other inverse operations when we're solving equations. So I just wanted to just go over it briefly just to show you that nothing changes from when we do inequalities to equations. And I just wanted to just practice a few others uh, graphing and then showing how we can plug in our numbers uh, to figure out which way we graph. Um, just so you know as well, uh, there are other ways that you can identify how to graph. Uh, but until I feel like we are really comfortable and really good with graphing um, and really truly understand it, uh, you're always going to see me plug in these numbers to test which region works.